We're really happy we have Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton with us tonight. Senator, now the issue of crime and our under incarceration problem have been really big on your, uh, your list to, to address in the U.S. Senate. Um, what do you make of what we're seeing tonight with the facts as we know them tonight? Well, Laura, it's another horrifying string of crimes in Memphis. The people of Memphis deserve much better than what they've gotten from their city government uh, in just the last few days. You've seen these crimes. So that's reflective of crime going back in Memphis for a long time. It's reflective of crime in big cities across America. I'm praying right now that law enforcement in Memphis or if this killer has crossed the Mississippi River into Arkansas is able to swiftly apprehend him. But as you point out, we got to this point in part because of failures of the left across America to treat criminals as the criminals they are. We do not have an over-incarceration problem in this country. As the left says, even as some Republicans say, half of all violent crimes go unsolved, four-fifths of all property crimes go unsolved. Tell their victims that we have an over-incarceration problem in this country. Killers like the one we see tonight are depraved sociopaths. They need to be locked up or they need to be executed. That's the way to keep our citizens safe from these criminals. Now, Senator, Speaker Pelosi today um, kind of revealed what her goal is after the midterms if the Democrats manage to stay in power. Watch this. We just passed the assault weapon ban in the House of Representatives. If we just win two more senators who share our view in this next election, we'll be able to pull back that filibuster and pass the background check legislation and again uh, the assault weapon ban and make the world safer. Senator, that's what's going to happen if people keep voting for Democrats. Innocent Americans will be deprived of their ability and of their weapon of choice to use for self-defense. And more depraved yeah, yeah, criminals Laura, th th will be released onto the streets. That's what happened here tonight. This man should be behind bars. Think he was let out in two years instead of at three. Three is a joke for a sentence in the, in the first place. Think about what Nancy Pelosi is saying. Democrats across the country have eliminated the bail system. They've shortened prison sentences. They've eliminated the death penalty. They sympathize with criminals more than their victims. And then when you see crime rampages like we've seen in Memphis in the last few days, like cities in, that you've seen in Philadelphia, what's the Democrat solution? Is to take away your right as a law-abiding citizen to defend yourself and your family. Look at John Fetterman, the Democratic nominee for Senate in Pennsylvania. He said if he had a magic wand, then he could just change one thing. It wouldn't be the cost of gasoline. It wouldn't be the price of your groceries. It wouldn't be the opioid crisis we have in this country. If John Fetterman had a magic wand, the one thing he would do is eliminate long prison sentences for murderers. And John Fetterman is not an outlier. He may be a radical, but he is entirely representative of the radical left in America today that has unleashed a crime wave across this country. You saw in that clip what Nancy Pelosi says her answer to be, which is disarming law-abiding citizens. That's why every one of your viewers should go out and vote Republican in two months to make sure that we can protect our fellow citizens from these depraved criminals. And uh, Senator Cotton, another point that we have to raise here is that I think the the injection of race into the criticism of the police, which we saw going back to Al Sharpton, echoed by Eric Holder in 2014, uh, where it was the first instinct of theirs was to say, it's racial. If someone's arrested, it's racial. If someone is manhandled, it's racist. That's also, I think, compromised policing across the country because you talk to the police, they're afraid. They're afraid to do anything, lest they be called racist for arresting someone who's not cooperative. It's very difficult to be a police officer in this environment. It's incredibly challenging to be police today, Laura. I talk to police officers all across the country, and they worry very much that mayors or county executives or governors will not support them when in the heat of the moment they have to use deadly force. They want accountability for anyone who acts inappropriately, but they don't want 
politicians jumping to conclusions and throwing them under the bus. We should back the men and women in blue. They are the only thing that stand between you and your family and these criminals like you see tonight in this rampage across the city of Memphis. And in fact, the people who are most harmed by this crime wave are likely to be minorities. Memphis is a majority African-American city. Look at what they've had to deal with, not just in the last few days, but in months and years of rising crime. The same is the case in so many cities across America. The Democratic left has failed African-Americans where crime is rising in their neighborhoods. That man that killed Eliza Fletcher was apparently terrorizing his own community, the apartment building he lived in. Where were the police officers, black, white, Latino, or any other race, to protect those citizens? They deserve better from their elected leaders. Yeah, and meanwhile, we have all these consent decrees that the Justice Department still has an effect on police departments across the country. I'm not saying there doesn't need to be any reforms. I'm sure there reforms are necessary in some cases. But the findings of implicit bias in policing, those are, those are too readily found with very little uh, evidence. And, uh, Senator, uh, back to the Eric Holder point, can I, I'd like to read this quote just so people know what I'm talking about. Back in 2013, he said, too many people go to too many prisons for far too long for no good law enforcement reason. We need to ensure that incarceration is used to punish, deter, and rehabilitate, not merely to warehouse and forget. Well, your final reaction to that, Senator, given the news tonight. Well, I think most citizens in Memphis wish that this killer had spent more than just a few years in jail for his crimes. Or Eliza Fletcher and her family wish that her killer had spent more time in jail than we did for his heinous crimes. Prison is there not only to punish and to deter, but also to incapacitate. As you suggested, some people simply need to be locked up to keep this country safe. And if they're depraved murderers, they need to be executed, something the Biden administration has refused to do from the day they took office, even though there are still federal prisoners sitting on death row, something that the Democratic left and left-wing legal activists had tried to stop states like Arkansas from doing for decades. Now, yeah, people keep voting Democrat. This is what they're going to get, sadly. More crime and uh, you know, more depravity across the country. Senator, thank you tonight.